Hello everyone. In today's video, I'll cover Zscaler workflow automation. We'll start with defining what is Zscaler workflow automation, what key problem it solves, we'll see a live demo, and finally, we'll wrap up with the key benefits and differentiators. So let's get started. Zscaler workflow automation is a tool that's an in-house incident management workflow designed for customers to manage both inline and out-of-band CASP DLP incidents. This tool provides an incident dashboard where the incident management team can triage DLP incidents. Each incident includes the artifact which triggered a DLP transaction and the metadata associated with it. From the data protection point of view, to manage DLP incident, historically, customers rely on integrating log streaming service with their SIM and SOAR tools for incident triaging. Zscaler incident receiver integration, which helps customers store all the incident artifacts on a server at DMZ. Then we have an old school email notification way where a DLP policy is triggered and email is sent out to an admin with the artifacts. And finally, secure ICAP, where you can forward evidence about transactions that violate the DLP policy to an on-prem ICAP receiver. If you notice, all these options are inadequate to solve one problem, and that is the incident workflow where analysts can manage incidents and create customized workflows and automate incident remediation. So nothing is more exciting than seeing the product in action so let's hop onto the portal. So here's your workflow automation and dashboard. It arms the operation team to reduce the incident resolution time and get a high level overview of overall risk of the organization. Let's talk about the incident groups that enables the admin to group the individual incident so that all of them can be managed together. For example, we have uh, the incidents that uh, are for uh, the MIP uh, label confidential or all the incidents that are PCI high, or could be the incidents that are reported by users belonging to a particular group like uh, HR. Then we have uh, the incident group mapping that specifies the incident that are associated with a specific incident group map to one or more attributes in an incident transaction. For example, you have uh, the PCI high group. As you could see that it matches the policy that is triggered by the credit card and social security engines. And once you have these incident groups and mapping defined, then uh, you can have uh, the admin assignment taken care of. For example, this first uh, user here, which is a DLP admin, is responsible for all the incident that falls under the MIP uh, label confidential and all the default uh, incidents. Then we also have a concept of priority where uh, you can have four type of priorities, critical, high, medium, and low. And as you could see that for PCI high, MIP label confidential, and for IDM, we have uh, the priority configured as high, whereas for uh, the default violation, uh, we have the priority configured as uh, medium. So let's now pivot to the most juicy part of this demo, which is about the incidents. So you could see that in the last uh, 48 hours, 465 incidents were opened, nine waiting for feedback, nine escalated. And uh, let's say I'm a DLP admin. I want to see all the inline DLP incidents related to file sharing. So what I would do is that I will set uh, the source type to inline and then DLP type to file sharing. And now you could see that I have uh, 80 incidents that are available. So let's see that. Uh, So let's just pick any incident here. And uh, you could see that uh, the incident details, the time the, this incident was triggered, it's a high priority incident, which is a violation of a compliance category. This is the user that triggered the incident, the IP of the user, and here are some DLP details, the DLP rules, engines, and dictionaries. 
looks like this is an American Express uh, credit card and uh, the violation contents and the trigger data. So this is a pre-signed uh, S3 link. Let's uh, get to that link and open. And yeah, so this is the American Express uh, card. And uh, here you would see the the audit trail of the ticket. So let's take an action, ask the user to justify the action. And uh, what I can do is that I can even escalate the ticket to myself just for the demo purpose. Let me enter the email here. And you could see that uh, the escalation notification is uh, sent out. So if I refresh this ticket, you will see that uh, the audit trail will show a lot more detail here. Here you could see that a pre-signed URL was generated. It was open when we saw that credit card image. Then a notification was sent out to ask the user to justify the action. Then the ticket was escalated to this address. And uh, we could see that there is a new email that uh, I have received uh, just recently, which is the escalation that uh, I have uh, triggered. So one last thing that I would like to show is that if I take this incident ID and go on my ZIA side of the house and filter for the DLP identifier using that ID that we grabbed from the workflow automation and you could see the incident details here as well. So this is the user this is the uh, violation of the compliance category. The cloud application that is used is Box. File sharing application. DLP identifier and uh, MD5. So to recap, uh, what we have seen is an integrated tool with a single pane of glass to view, analyze, and process all DLP incidents from cloud to endpoint DLP. Violators and managers can be contacted with the click of a button and tracking for accountability is simplified through an audit trail. Then in terms of security posture, a unified view to monitor and manage and assess uh, all DLP incidents and get a holistic view of organization's security posture and how uh, to improve it. Then for incident resolution, the incident management is one of the most uh, challenging tasks. So workflow automation helps reduce the incident resolution time where customers can have the incident data and artifacts, user information, DLP policy engine information, trigger data, all at one place. Through workflow automation, you can define clear lines of responsibilities for different type of incident through incident group feature. And finally, dashboard to evaluate the trend of key performance indicators such as time to resolve incidents, cumulative incident over time, rule fault positive over time. And these data uh, could be really helpful to improve the security efficacy in terms of catching violations, rule accuracy and uh, resolution time. So hope you find the contents presented uh, in this video helpful. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, uh, feel free to reach out. Thanks and have a great day.